Hi, my name's Tom and welcome back to my series, Winds of Change. In this episode, we're going to be exploring Native American flutes. This is a family of fipple flutes originating from Central America. I actually have some prior experience learning Native American flutes, as it was this particular instrument that got me interested in ethnomusicology in the first place. However, up until now, I have been completely clueless about the origin of the Native American flute, and I am sure there is still lots to learn about the style and the settings for which this instrument may be played. Compared to the flutes that we've been exploring so far, this is actually quite a young instrument. The oldest recorded Native American flute dates back to the 1820s. However, we believe that Native Americans have been constructing and playing flutes for years before this. It's rather fortunate that the last instrument we explored was the Japanese shakuhachi, as the Native American flute produces a tone in the same way. However, it requires different skill from the player. Rather than demanding the player to create a cut airstream across a splitting edge on the shakuhachi, the Native American flute invites a player to blow into the first chamber, which then separates the air into a narrower airstream across a splitting edge. So essentially, this is simplifying the process of learning an embouchure. In fact, it eliminates any need for this at all. You blow into the top of the Native American flute just as you would a recorder. Just as we saw with the Indian Bansuri and the Chinese Dietze, the Native American flute typically has six finger holes, three per hand. And just like all the other instruments we've covered so far, the more fingers you have covering the holes, the lower the pitch, the less, the higher the pitch. The instrument I'm using to demonstrate is one that I bought several years ago. It's made out of cedar wood, which is typical for a Native American flute. As you can see, there is actually more than one pipe on this flute, and again, this is quite common in Native American flutes because they are typically a self-accompanying instrument. Flute makers decided to add extra pipes to be played simultaneously with the pitched pipes to create a drone to play along to. This allowed players to access harmony and actually this is the first wind instrument in the series that we're looking at that can create more than one note at a time. Native American flutes sometimes even have three pipes to be played simultaneously. This is one drone pipe, one which can access all the notes, and an extra pipe for which you can move your lower hand of the other tube to then create harmony with two fingered pipes and a drone. This results in a triad chord. The Native American flute produces a sound that many people relate to relaxation or meditation. This can be seen in the absolute numerous examples of spa soundtracks, yoga classes, meditations, and incidental music in film and TV. There have also been scientific studies into the benefits of playing Native American flute, and some claim that it can even improve the health of your heart. Maybe this links to the fact the Native American flutes were traditionally created as a symbol for courting. Native American tribesmen would craft flutes and leave them outside the tents of women they wished to court. Some sources claim that if the flute was taken into the tent by morning, that was the sign that a woman was interested in courting the man. Before they would leave the flutes outside the tents, the men would play them in an attempt to woo. So knowing this, we can now explore the colours and the musicality that these flutes were originally made to express. Upon first hearing the tone of the Native American flute, you'll notice it's quite a gentle and warm sound. This is actually because I'm using hot air rather than cold air. So when I play flute, Bansuri, Dietze, Shakuhachi, I'm using cold air. What this means is it's a very focused and fast airstream. If you were to hold your hand out like this in front of you and blow short, sharp, cold air, onto your hand, you would feel the cold. Whereas if you were to use hot air, a slower and wider, less focused air stream, it would feel warm to the hand, like fogging up a window. And that is the type of airflow that I'm using to make a sound on the Native American flute. I'm blowing hot air into the chamber 
and then keeping it spinning just by supporting a little bit more. Some musicians tend to warm up their sound a little bit more using vibrato, and it's exactly the same as on a transverse flute. You're not actually wobbling your mouth or anything to do with you know, the airflow inside. Actually, what you're doing is creating like a ha-ha-ha effect and just wavering the amount of pressure in the airflow. So I'm literally going down the flute to make that sound. Another common technique I picked up on listening to various native flute recordings was the use of smearing and sliding fingers. When I examined this in my own practice, I realised that the holes are so small and far enough apart that you can gradually slide your fingers off to create a smoother change of notes, if that's the desired effect. Another very stylistic way of playing the Native American flute is at the end of a phrase, when you're rounding off a note, you do something called um, an end pop. I learnt this from the fantastic Johnny Lipford, um, and in listening to lots of different recordings, I can hear that it's actually something that's very nuanced in the style of playing one of these. Um, when you get towards the end of a phrase, you do a slight crescendo towards the end of the note, and you lift all your fingers and it creates this kind of like popping sound and the way to get it even sharper is you do something called a tongue stop so basically i bring i never actually touch the the flute when i'm tonguing um it's on the back of my teeth i'm going ta -ta 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 -ta. that's how i do it um and a tongue stop is basically where you bring your tongue to the back of your teeth really quickly and it shuts off the air supply. So it's a very clean end to the note. So I go, ta, straight away, ta. So now when I put that with the end pop of the fingers and a little crescendo, you get this really authentic sounding end to a phrase. This way of tonguing is really flexible, so I can actually tongue very fast, very sharp, very clean. Um, I can double tongue. So the single tongue would be double tongue, I'm going dugger, dugger, dugger. Could even do triple tonguing, dugger, dugger. I didn't know I could do that. Um, I can just go really fast. So when I first had a look at the triple flute, I thought, how on earth am I meant to play three notes at once? I get that on the double flute, there's two holes and you can cover them with your mouth, but actually these are quite wide set. So what a lot of musicians actually do is add these pipes, these just plastic pipes. You can get them in kind of like um, hardware shops and things. Um, so that it just focuses a little bit more into one point and you can access them more at the same time but also isolate them if you wanted to. So as I mentioned earlier in the video, you do actually use two of these pipes with your hands to create the different chords. So in this middle pipe, this is essentially a single native flute as you would find it if it was just on its own. So you've got one, two, one, two, three. This one's been covered so that you can accommodate playing with both hands. Otherwise it would be one, two, three, one, two, three. All the pentatonic is accessible just by that one flute. This one can play that bottom note. And it's only got three holes. So in the degrees of pentatonic, you've got the tonic, the minor third, and then the subdominant which means that if you're playing here and here, so obviously you've only got this hand left, you've got the fifth and the, and the seventh. So I can play intervals of fifths just by putting all the fingers down that I possibly can. 
and then I can access different intervals and chords by lifting different fingers in different combinations. And then when I add in the drone flute, which is on the end, you can then make a triad. Native flute players also use ornamentation to decorate their melodies. Rather than just going up and down the pentatonic scale um, or jumping in intervals, they actually add in little mordants, as we'd understand them to be.
So that concludes this episode and the exploration into Native American flutes. Join me next time. We'll be looking at Irish flutes and tin whistles.